It's a month of customization as we count down 10 of the hottest board games and their cool community created contributions. It's all coming up as we count down the top 10 hottest games as of October 2018. Hey there, I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Board Game Geek, and welcome to this month's Top 10 Hottest Games, which is based on the titles that are generating the most traffic and discussion on the Board Game Geek website over the past 30 days. These games are tracked on the site's hottest games list, and the higher and longer a game remains on the list throughout the month, the higher it ranks on the Top 10. Now 146 different games appeared on the list over the last 30 days, and we're going to be looking at the Top 10 starting with one that made its first appearance on the countdown last month. This month's biggest climber, Brass Birmingham, catapults up from spot 90. Ooh. Well, coming in at number 10 this month is Brass Birmingham. Perfect pronunciation. Brass Birmingham by Roxley Games is an economic strategy game that's a sequel to Martin Wallace's 2007 title, Brass. The game sets the stage for entrepreneurs during the Industrial Revolution to compete to best develop, build, and establish their industries and network as they exploit market demands. The Brass series is currently in an upswing, with many groups playing it recently. But now, even solo players can get in a few games, thanks to a fan-made single-player variant made by BGG user Mike Taylor. This solo competitive mode option, available for download on Brass Birmingham's BGG page, pits a player against an automated AI named George. Now, I'm going to include a link to the rules for Mike's solo version in the video description below, in case you'd like to give this solo mode of Brass Birmingham a try. And speaking of Brass, at spot number 9 we have another version of Brass, which also appeared on the countdown last month. And that game is 2007's Brass Lancashire. Yeah. Well, in spot number 9 this month is Brass Lancashire. Pronunciation Combo. Brass Lancashire, also by Roxley Games, was originally published as just Brass. This is an economic strategy game that tells the story of competing cotton entrepreneurs in Lancashire during the Industrial Revolution as well. Similar to Birmingham, players must develop, build, and establish their industries and network so they can capitalize on the demand for iron, coal, and cotton. While Brass Birmingham is a new game, Lancashire is a remake of the original version of Brass, which was first published in 2007. In addition to a complete overhaul to the game's artwork, this new version also includes several additional updates, including improving the three-player experience by shortening each half of the game and tuning the deck, modifying the two-player rules so that it's playable without the need of an alternate board, and adjusting point values to improve the game overall. Now, with all of these updates, it makes sense why Brass Lancashire settles in at spot number 9 this month. And now rematerializing on the countdown in spot number 8, after a month away from the top 10, is Spirit Island by Greater Than Games. Spirit Island is a cooperative game in which players embody various magical spirits who must defend their island home from colonizing invaders. Each spirit in the game has its own unique elemental powers. And just as unique as this is the handcrafted, custom upgraded version of Spirit Island created by BGG user Guillaume Rivest. Guillaume spent several months upgrading his copy of Spirit Island by utilizing plywood, carpet tiles, foam, and recycled components from other games. A full set of photos and more information about this custom upgrade is available on the BGG forum, so I'll add a link to that as well in the video description below, so anyone who'd like to check this out can find it and get their own little bit of island upgrade inspiration. Lumbering up from spot 12 to rejoin our countdown in spot number 7 this month is Arkham Horror The Card Game. In the game, characters within the quiet New England town of Arkham embark on various investigations in order to protect not only their town, but life as we know it, as they unravel the world's most terrifying mysteries. Now, at this point in the game's longevity, nearly 20 expansions for Arkham Horror The Card Game have been released. But those whose thirst for mystery still goes unquenched may also want to check out the ArkhamCentral.com website, which features fan-made campaigns created and rated by the online community. As of the time of this recording, there are over 25 adventures on Arkham Central, so 
Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a link to that site in this video's description, so if you're looking for some additional Arkham Adventures, you can check it out. Coming in at number six this month is Scythe. Now in Scythe, players conquer territory, reap resources, gain villagers, build structures, construct monstrous mechs, and engage in various random encounters. Each encounter card in the game provides the player with several options, providing various risks and benefits based on which choice that they make. And for those out there who are looking for more choices available to make, well, there's a set of 32 new encounter cards that are in development. Now, all of these encounter cards were submitted by players and then developed into the final cards by Stonemaier Games. These fan-made encounters are designed to match the same style of the existing encounter cards and be compatible with any configuration of the base game or its expansions. Now, the pack of these crowdsourced scythe encounters is currently scheduled for delivery in December. Making its debut in the top 10 this month in spot number five is the game... Teotihuacan. Full recovery. In Teotihuacan City of Gods by NSKN Games, each player commands a force of worker dice which grow in strength with every move. On their turn, players move a worker around a modular board choosing one of two areas on that location tile that they select. One area offers an action and a worker upgrade, while the other area provides a powerful bonus. As the game progresses, players will manage their workforce and resources, develop new technologies, climb the steps of the three great temples, build houses for the inhabitants of the city, and raise the legendary and breathtaking Pyramid of the Sun in the very center of the city. Teotihuacan, City of Gods, is currently scheduled for a mid-October release. Inching up a spot to end the month at number four is Terraforming Mars by Stronghold Games. In Terraforming Mars, players run colossal corporations competing to transform the Martian landscape into a new world that's capable of providing humanity with a new location on which to provide drive through taxidermy services. A Terraforming Mars has been played a lot since it was released nearly three years ago, so it makes sense that several members of the gaming community have developed unofficial expansions for the game. One of these is the fan-made Pathfinders expansion by BGG user Jacob Wojcik, which introduces new project cards, mega structures and corporations, a new data resource, special tiles, a solar system mini board, and new mechanisms. And as with the other community-made items that have been mentioned in this video, I'm going to add a link to this Pathfinders expansion in the description below in case you want to try out these additional elements the next time you embark on terraforming the Red Planet. Finishing the month in spot number three for a second month in a row is Everdell by Starling Games. Everdell is a game of tableau building and worker placement that takes place beneath the boughs of towering trees where a civilization of forest critters have begun expanding their empires. The two versions of this game will be available, a standard and collector's edition. Now the collector's edition has a 10 card legends expansion, 15 extra extra cards, 30 metal tokens, and an upgraded eight-sided die. Now, the collector's edition of Everdell became available for purchase over the summer, and the standard edition of the game is currently scheduled to be released in December. Maintaining spot number two in the countdown again this month is Gloomhaven by Cephala Fair Games. Now, one thing about this Euro-inspired game of exploration and tactical combat set in a persistent world that many players have been looking forward to is the game's first expansion, Forgotten Circles, which was originally announced back in March. But since then, not a lot of news about it's been available, so what happened? Well, an article on the Cephala Fair website explains that the Forgotten Circles expansion has become quite a bit more massive than what we had originally anticipated. They go on to say that while the expansion scenario book won't be as huge as the original one, it's still gonna be pretty big. But even so, no word yet is available on the content or release date of the other secret expansion for Gloomhaven that Isaac Childress has been working on. And retaining the number one spot in the countdown for a second month in a row is Root by Leader Games. Root is a game of adventure and confrontation in which two to four players battle for control of a vast wilderness. 
In the game, the nefarious Marquis de Cat has seized the great woodland, intent on harvesting its riches. And under her rule, the many creatures of the forest have banded together in an alliance that seeks to strengthen its resources so it can subvert the rule of cats. As in Leader Games' previous title, Vast, each player in Root has a unique set of capabilities and a different victory condition, so these differences between each faction may help increase the game's replayability. But will Root continue being played by enough people to keep it in the number one spot? Well, we'll find out next month. In the meantime though, here is your list of the top 10 most popular board games as of October 2018. And for more board game countdowns, news, previews, and playthroughs, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the videos posted on the channel. Thanks, until next time, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Board Game Geek. Take care. I'm gonna add a link to Guillaume's forum post for anyone else to check out who would like to look and see what the words are I'm supposed to be saying because that was really not it at all and scene. To compete with things that they're competing with. It's a competition, really. Two to four players battle for control of a vast wilderness. Wilderness, wilderness, it's a wilderness. Hey, look at the wilderness over here. It's vast. No word yet on the content or release date of the other secret Gloomhaven expansion that Isaac Childress has been working on. So that is it. Um...